Hello, scientists! Welcome back to Joe Bao Math. So,、uh, in the comment section, some of you told me that you don't have access to Adobe Illustrator at your research institute or universities, and、uh, and then some of you asked me if you can use Inkscape instead.、Uh, the answer is yes. You can absolutely use this open source software called Inkscape to create the same quality of graphical abstract for your publication. It is free to use, and a lot of its functions are interchangeable、uh, with Adobe Illustrator. So、uh, I will demonstrate how to draw a little bit by layer、uh, in Inkscape uh, as uh, the style that I、uh, show you in the previous Adobe Illustrator tutorial. And、um, you can pick which one you prefer and which one is uh, more uh, suitable for your publication. So、uh, without further ado, let's start to draw our map. This is the little bit by layer I will show you how to draw in this tutorial. It's very similar to what we did in our Adobe Illustrator tutorial.、Uh, we need to first create、uh, one unit of、uh, phospholipid. So、uh, grab your ellipse tool and press Control and drag to create a perfect circle. That's the hydrophilic part. Then zoom in、uh, so we can work on it closely. Okay. Then we need to、uh, draw the lipid chains. And so let's grab our paint tool.、Um, well, in Inkscape, it's called Draw Bizer Curves and Straight Lines. Uh, with this tool, if you only click and drag, you can only create straight lines.、Uh, in order to create a curvature line, you have to click and drag on your anchor point. So,、uh, as you can see, the handles will show up. Let's do it again. Click and drag, then go to the second one. Click and drag. And the third one, click and drag. And when you're done, press Enter. Then you will have your curvature path. That's、uh, readjusted to、uh, the shape of the phospholipid. Okay, I realize I. Uh, actually, only need two anchor points. So、uh, to delete anchor point, go right here to this icon and then press it. So then you can delete it. Let's zoom in a little bit further more. And、um, move it here. And move this one over here. Okay, then、uh, I'll change the stroke style to、uh, make it thicker, and then、uh, the cap to be rounded so it looks more organic. I'll copy it, Control C, Control V to copy it and put it respectively at the、uh, location for the second lipid. Chain and then、uh, I'll a line tool is over here, so I can get it、uh, a line window down here, and I can get it aligned. All right.、Uh, the different thing in Inkscape is that、um, the next function we it can only Work on one single shape, and now we have three shapes. We have to combine them together. So to do that, first we need to convert the strokes into a shape. So let's go to Path, and then click on Stroke to Path. And the same for this one, Stroke to Path. And、uh, so, if you、uh, look, take a look at the path now. 
Uh, if you take a look at this, your stroke now, you can see that you can start to fill in color for it and also apply stroke on it. Uh, now the stroke is really thick, so uh, it overlay the inner fill. So essentially it has turned into the shape. It is very similar to the function called expand in Illustrator. And we need to do the same for this one. Stroke to path. Okay, great. And then we need to combine these three uh, components into one shape. And I want to uh, maintain the style of uh, this circle and apply it throughout the entire shape. So I need to move it to the top. And then select all of them. Press Ctrl G or Command G and Mac to group it. And then go to Path, Combine. So you'll see that there are a white fill uh, in the intersection between the shapes. Uh, don't mind that too much at the moment. We can have that adjusted later. Okay, now the um, so now is where the big magic happens. We are going to apply this component onto a path. So first we need to open a window called the path effects and it will pop up on the right hand side and then uh, we will click on this plus icon to uh, apply an effect onto our path. Uh, the effect that we need is called pattern along path. So that's Click on it and uh, then you'll see it will pop up in the path effect window. Okay, now we need to apply this component onto the path and make it uh, into the effect. So that's select our component, press Command C to copy it, and then go to your path. And uh, right here, you'll see an icon saying link to path in clipboard. Press on it. And it looks very uh, distorted at the moment. It is because uh, the pattern copies, we need to switch it to repeat it. So uh, now you see the uh, component has been uh, aligned along the path, uh, but it is without color. We can uh, put the color in by simply going here in the swatches and press on the color that you like. Okay, so this is the simpler version of how you can draw this in Inkscape. If you want to have the gradient like I have over here, then you need to go in and do some uh, adjustment and apply the gradients onto each component. So before demonstrating that, I will uh, first create the inner part of the lipid bilayer. So you can just copy it and then spin it around. To spin an object, click on the selected object and you'll see these uh, rotation handles that you can use. Move it over here. Then you can go back to your direct selection tool over here to move the anchor points to where you want it to be. At the moment, we cannot uh, edit the individual components in our path because it is considered as one component. Um, so that's why we need to break it apart. Before breaking it apart, I think it is wiser to make a copy of your work. So if there's anything that you want to go back to readjust, then 
you can always go back to your copy. Okay, now we're ready to break it apart. Let's go to path and go to path. Okay, now we're ready to break it apart. Let's select the paths and go to path break apart. So now you can see all the components are their own objects. And uh, so this will allow us to apply the gradient onto our Phosphor head. Let's uh, go to our Fill and Stroke panel and click on Gradient. Uh, I have a already made gradient here, but I will still show you how to create a gradient from scratch. So first let's zoom further in and select one of the head. Go to Gradient Tool. What we need is a radial gradient, so uh, let's switch to that. And once that's ready, let's drag on our object. So uh, then you'll see the hand gradient handle pops up. And we can move that to the center of our object. Yeah, the thing about using Inkscape on Mac is it is a little bit slow. I read uh, it is not as slow in Windows, so uh, let me know in the comment section that if you also uh, experience this on Mac and uh, how are you using it on Windows because sometimes I really struggle to do some adjustments on Mac. Okay, and um, now we need the. And now we need. Okay, now uh, we have the radio gradient well positioned. We want the outer part to be uh, the orange and the inner part to be white. So let's select the outer anchor point and then click on the orange over here in the swatch then then select the center anchor point and click on the white in the swatch so now uh, this is the gradient that creates a round ball feeling on your phosphate head and uh, the handy thing about uh, Inkscape is these swatches and uh, that you created uh, will be presented in the fill and stroke uh, panel. So then that means you can very easily apply it to uh, other objects by simply going to gradient panel and then click on the ones that you want to apply it on. So for the inner lipid part, you can select them and uh, what I did here was I delete the um, stroke of the inner part. Then you'll see the black uh, outline will disappear and the orange part will show up. I also notice uh, my So uh, I actually found a function called select fill and stroke. This will allow me to change all of their fill at once to the darker color. Some of them have missed out, but uh, I can always just go back and convert them. 
Okay, so that's how we create a liquid by layer in Enscape. Since it's an open source software, there are a lot more that you need to do manually to adjust the style. Uh, however, you can definitely achieve the same quality of graphical abstract in Inkscape. So uh, let me comment. Uh, welcome to comment below to let me know uh, what you think about uh, Inkscape. Are you using it? What else would you like to learn? What have you been drawing in Inkscape? I would love to know your experiences and uh, your ideas for creating graphical abstract. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and also welcome to subscribe to DrawBioMed for more graphical abstract tutorials. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.